I believe that life is a beautiful dance between progress and pleasure. And we often talk about having purpose in our lives. Many people feel like, I don't know if I'm good at anything, or what is my purpose? Or how do I make my dreams real? I feel stuck, I feel unmotivated, I feel tired, but I have this responsibility. I have a job that I don't enjoy. We all can have a lot of resistance toward just feeling good about our life or feeling connected to the present moment. And the reason for this is because we have two parts of us. We have a part of us that wants progress, but a part of us that wants pleasure, self-worth, feeling connected to the moment. And the truth is you have to learn how to get these two to dance together. And I believe that this is why a lot of personal growth advice and information can be challenging for people to receive if your mind isn't really understanding at a deeper level what's really going on here. If that's ever been you, you feel stuck, you wanna live more purposeful, you wanna create something that's really yours or true to you, you just want to feel more connected to yourself, then you're gonna love today's episode. I bring on my longtime friend, Dr. Ray Doctor, who's been a coach for the past 30 years, and he also holds a doctorate in cl clinical psychology. And we break down the logic and some of the emotions that we deal with whenever it comes to this phenomenon of balancing progress and pleasure. I think you'll find this a very refreshing episode if you want to get a little bit deeper dive and understand yourself better, as well as learn some tools that are free that you can use to help you self-reflect more and uncover the hidden beliefs that might be getting in the way of you moving towards creating from a place of truth within the self. So that sounds good to you. You're going to love today's episode. My name is Eric Copeland. I'm your host and welcome to another episode of The Music for Life. I'll see you inside. Welcome back to the show, Dr. Ace. Good to have you back on The Music of Life. Thank you for having me again. I feel weird. I say thank you for having me again. I'm like, you didn't have me. <laughs> I have you. <laughs> I wanted to get you back on here because I had a topic that was uh, something I really wanted to address. And it's really about this concept of doing what you love, following your excitement, finding your purpose. You hear a lot of talk about this in the personal growth mm -hmm. space. You hear a lot of talk about it in the um, spiritual space. And uh, I wanted to take a stab at kind of demystifying some of the I, you know, thoughts around it. A lot of people talk a lot about this, you know, there's just a lot of confusion, I think. Um, and just to kind of illustrate this, I want to, I'll share a quick um, uh, story from my personal life with you about nine years ago. Um, and you're, you're aware of this video, but I had made a video, my first video on YouTube and, uh, and it had taken off. It got hundred, you know, a couple hundred thousand views, but more importantly, it had gotten hundreds of comments. And for me at the time, it was something where I, all I was doing was sharing a personal um, kind of self-reflection exercise that I had kind of created for myself because I was trying to like make get some movement in my own life. And it helped me get a little bit clear about like maybe how, you know, how can I feel a sense of purpose or feel honestly some excitement in a direction that would, that would feel like it's me, you know, in terms of like career mm -hmm. and things like that. So I shared this exercise, um, you know, and I got all these comments and it was really interesting because about 80% of them were um just saying thank you this really helped you know and then there was this 20 percent of people that were they they had this yeah but and it was like great exercise but yeah but what if you're not good at anything yeah mm -hmm. but you know what if you don't have any talents um what do you do then so that was a, a thing and then there were just some you know your classic youtube haters we'll mm -hmm. disregard them uh so this is something that's been a theme in my life um, I like to talk about this a lot and we've had conversations and I think what I'd love to kind of help someone understand who's watching this video is that if you, if you know that there's this kind of part of you that would love to do something maybe a little different or new or just something that feels more like you, maybe you don't know what that is yet. You might have doubts around it. Um, I think it's important for a person to understand like why it's, it's, it's a rational and logical decision to to do something that you feel excited about or that love that you that you say quote love or even mm -hmm. feel good about um and i think it will help someone if they can see that like it's a rational decision you know if you can get yourself to like this isn't some dream dreamer kind of a thing there is rationale to this in human psychology mm -hmm. and why it works and i'd like to kind of take a little bit of a deep dive into that 
Cool. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I'm excited about it. Uh, I wanted to say something about purpose as sure. well, because a lot of times people think purpose is the actual career itself. Like they think I haven't found my purpose. So they think other people mm -hmm. are fortunate because they're able to work at a homeless shelter or it's like this, it's a, like this physical thing that you do and you're going to stay ex excited for the rest of your life or um, <clears throat> it's going to take care of you financially and everything else. But when it comes down to it, everything that you uh, start to do as far as whether it's a new relationship or a career, every day you come home, you are a new person. And sometimes there's ups and downs, whether it's financially, whether you are working with someone and you have some communication of fallout or not. And how you think about that, how you feel about that in relation to the job, career, or doing something for, for, for free, you're becoming of that. Like how you feel about that and whether or not you're going to grow and expand and keep doing that is your purpose. So it it's great that we can do something we like, but we are the ultimate purpose because we're always reflecting with what's going on. Now, the basic human experience is that it's either failing or succeeding or win or lose or it went really well or it went really bad. Mm -hmm. And so as an example, a person might quit school and feel like, oh, my God, like I just I, I wasted my time. Whereas another person who's more positive might say, wow, I learned that I didn't want to go to school and I already have the talents and I'm just going to go down this path. So, you know, our purpose is ourselves. So I want to be just put that out there because more and often people also go, you're so fortunate that you're able to do that. And they think it's something grand when it could be that your purpose is simply going into your garden, taking care of it and whatever ever you're feeling and whatever experience you have with your roses and trees that you take that in and you look at yourself in ways that you can grow. And that could be a great day. But you people watching this also, they might say, unless you're a professional landscaper and you're not making money, that you can't do that. So I think that we're also trying to help people understand first the mechanism that creates that abundance, the mechanism that uh, makes things work, but also where for you and I, we notice that unless it's authentically us, the like we have to put out fires. It's challenging. It doesn't work as well as we thought. We realize that it was outcome driven. Therefore, if it doesn't work out, we feel really bad. We don't grow. Mm -hmm. So I think in this conversation, we're trying to infuse all of that to give a greater understanding of what this all means and speaking to what you're talking about, this rational yeah, that's really, decision. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, it's funny how it comes down to really simple logic um, at the end of the day. Uh, I'm just thinking of a conversation I had the other night with um, uh, uh, a friend. He won't mind me saying his name. It's my friend, Jordan. And, um, you know, we were talking about uh, his... You know, I asked him, what do you, what do you want, man? And he, and he, and he was talking about like, you know, he wants to make movies and stuff. And so we're talking about fame and, and wealth and stuff like that. Right. Cause these are, these are, there, there's like a certain almost survival instinct that kind of like drives you towards like, man, if I have wealth, if I have these material things, then like there's certainly your logistics get better. There's certainly some power that can be experienced in that. Right. <clears throat> and I, and yeah, so the what woman I shows into, up. Yeah. With the woman yeah. shows up. The yeah. The respect woman, you know, whatever up. is. Yeah. Um, so there's like a rationale to that level of thinking, but when you drill, so I had us drilled a little bit deeper and I was like, well, if, if someone showed up today, let's say, let's just isolate money and someone showed up today and here's $10 million. And in exchange for $10 million, you need to spend the next 20 years of your life working at the um, sewage plant and giving up, um, you know, doing anything related to uh, the film, would you do it? No. So, okay. So it's not really the money then. Okay. Mm -hmm. The money's not the most important thing. So we just eliminated that logically. Yeah. It's like not that. Okay. And then the next was mm -hmm. like, well, what if you, every, what if you could become famous, but it was, you became famous for f being like the world's, um, 
you know, leading mathematician, would that excite you? No, I want to make movies. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then it's not the fame mm -hmm. that's actually driving you. And then I was like, well, what's the, uh, what's, why do you enjoy, like, what is it about making a film or a, a skit or something like that that brings you joy? And he's like, seeing other people enjoy it. I said, okay, so down in your core, it just feels good to share your gifts. Mm -hmm. Right. It just mm -hmm. feels good to share your gifts. And mm -hmm. so he had kind of like, he had never thought of it that way. And, and I think what, um, and it sounds like what you're saying when, with the whole concept of purpose and how you're the purpose is that there's, it's pretty basic. Like we all have my, my view on it. And in, in that video I did nine years ago was about the fact that we all have clues like we have like certain aptitudes, we have certain things that we just, you know, we find ourselves drawn to or that we have a natural skill with, you know, you're great with like, you know, coaching and um, mm -hmm. like that's a career, but like maybe in a different era that would have showed up differently. But that aptitude um, is, is apparent, right? Mm -hmm. And when you exchange, when you, when you shine or choose to share like a gift that you have and you see others and you notice that the community around you reflects back to you that there's value in that. It affirms the value you already believed in in the first place mm -hmm. that led you to sharing it. So it kind of has this synergistic uh, reinforcement mechanism built into it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really basic in a lot of ways. So it sounds like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what you're saying where, like, you are, when you're saying you are the purpose, is that kind of what you're talking about? Right. Yes. Uh, I always take things even deeper. <laughs> let's go. Let's go deeper, man. So, <laughs> so uh, I get what you were talking about in regard. I love how you stripped it down for Jordan as far as, you know, eliminating like uh, money and fame. Very important. And I do that as well with clients because people will come to me and say, I need a career change. This is just not mm -hmm. my purpose. I don't see myself doing this for another five or 10 years, or I just hate what I'm doing, or, or I don't believe in the product or services. Um, I would say, I, I don't know if it's most people, but let's just say many, many people are working just to pay their bills. You know, many people yeah. don't know why they do what they do. If you were to ask them, they'll just kind of go, whoa, like I have a family now, you know, and so I have a home or I, you know, I have a mortgage, I have to do this and that. And so for me to give up on this, that means like I'm going to have to sacrifice or I just can't do it. To younger people who would watch this, they might think, you know, I don't know where I'm going to go or be. I don't know what that is. And some people might say, I have absolutely no talents. What does that look like? And so, and that's, that's valid as well. Mm -hmm. However, here's something to where a place to start for people. It's true that if you don't like yourself, you won't be happy in an intimate relationship. If you don't like yourself, you will not find a job uh, or a thing to do where you won't find something to complain about. So it always comes back to yourself and that self-love and understanding who you are. And that's why I brought up the purpose part about it's who you are. So, for example, if you had a client and and they were showing up and saying that, you know, I don't know what I want to do. You and I could probably go through a list of questions. Well, what is the experience you want to have? They might say, I want to help and contribute. Well, that's a start. Uh, you might say, and what, how would that maybe look in as far as your lifestyle? I like being around people and I want to feel like I'm contributing and being part of something. Now, that sounds like someone who maybe can move in the direction of a startup. Um, that person might be doing that right now, but they're, they lack the, they're lacking awareness to how much they help out others. And so I've also have worked with clients where they realize, like, as an example, I worked, I worked with this yogini and she was on a spiritual path and she just didn't know how to run her business. And so she gave it up and started working for a bank, but she started attracting like people who needed loans for their, their mom and pop stores and where she actually started helping people start her business. And people came in there, started giving her cookies. And she, I said, well, how is that any different than being a successful yoga teacher? Mm -hmm. Aren't these people experiencing value? Um, do you feel guilty for feeling joy that you are kind of in a business suit? And 
we we she ended up recognizing that she was doing very much what she loved, but she had a really distorted lens on it because she felt corporate. So sometimes mm -hmm. it's evaluating that as well. But we get closer to understanding what we are to do, the closer we understand who we are, what we like, and what makes us feel good. Yeah, that's, um, you know, as someone who's chosen like an entrepreneurial path, I, I'm, I'm listening to that and like, I've certainly found almost like I had to, I'm literally processing in the moment, like judgment of uh, the nine to five life. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, there's a repulsiveness to it that like attracts me to like the freedom and things. But at the same time, like, it's not like I have any less responsibilities or challenges uh there's shadow aspects of that like i might spend more time alone or not have as much you know so it's not like there is this one magic external way that's mm -hmm. going to you know fix everything in your life if you can just achieve mm -hmm. this one state because everything's always dynamic but i think and again getting back to the the gifts i've really you know for me this is a personal and even starting this podcast you know was mm -hmm. a long time in coming um, I am a true believer, and I know you are as well, that every individual, like just simple example, if you get dropped on a remote island, on a deserted island, and there's 10 people, boom, mm -hmm. you're dropped on there. You got 10 people who are going to have different, um, different types of aptitudes. Maybe some people a little bit more, you know, we'll go with the classic right brain, left brain. Some people might mm -hmm. be good at like... Um, they're just good at thinking about like organizational stuff. So they might kind of design mm -hmm. a, a campsite or think of like create a system for, um, here's how we can make sure there's enough wood and, you know, make fire and here's where to get the water. Mm -hmm. and then you have others that might enjoy that, that they're the hunter type mm -hmm. and going and finding the mm -hmm. food. You might have those that are, um, that help are good with the social bonding mm -hmm. and, you know, dealing, helping to someone to talk to when you're dealing with the stresses of what you're experiencing with all this and so on and so on. And we have these kind of like natural inclinations. And I think that in a practical, like earthly sense, um, mm -hmm. those are good clues that if you, in other words, you can take those aptitudes and bring them to any situation. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe let's say if you aspire to be an entrepreneur, but you're working a nine to five, if you, you can still be bringing your aptitudes and your gifts to the table, um, in, in, it takes you choosing to see that those things are actually valuable, you know, mm -hmm. that how you show up and what you're naturally good at. Um, I've heard it referred to as like playing to your strengths and those mm -hmm. things. Those are things that are going to give you relevance in the community mm -hmm. in a very practical earthly sense. Uh, and also affirm like that affirm the feeling of those gifts being valuable inside of you as well, because it does often feel risky to mm -hmm. say, put yourself out there or uh, especially if that wasn't maybe cultivated or nurtured in you as a child, which no one gets all their gifts, you know, perfectly affirmed and nurtured. So it's really up to you to kind of like know who you are and choose to actually shine. So any, mm -hmm. any insights on that? So I'm going to, share some example examples with the aptitudes that you were talking about. So it's even clearer than share even more of like kind of what I got from that. And so that's why I said that a person who, who is like, say the natural caregiver, whether they're on that Island you describe as like Lord of the flies or not, you know, the caregiver of the <laughs> tribe or the, the more aggressive person who actually is a hunter and goes out there. How mm -hmm. would that, you know, it's like some of us are actually just go-getters and whatever, whether we are working at Home Depot or an entrepreneur is that might be the energy. It's just something that mm -hmm. comes really easy. As an example, even as a parent, when it comes to discipline, that's actually very easy for me. I grew up with a Marine. My dad was a Marine 30 years. Whereas for my girlfriend, it's like difficult. She's like, so for her, it's challenging, whereas playing with the kids is more challenging for me. Mm. So I'm just not good at it. And I, I'm working on it, but I'm a fun dad, but I'm more into like the outdoor adventures, throwing axes and 
skiing and things like that, rather than the, you know, sitting down, moving a hot wheel car and whatever else. I've never mm -hmm. been good at that. And I'm okay mm -hmm. with that. So many of us think we're supposed to be good at whatever someone's telling us to do. And it's not true. And it's why many of us feel unhappy, even if we're making a bunch mm -hmm. of money, or even if the job comes with some title that people are impressed with, we go out and at to bars and share what it is that we do. It's important for every person if that is something that's natural for them and it feels good, like it's conscious, you know, back to the caregiving thing. If you were a child and your mother was an, an alcoholic and your, your dad left and here you were coming back from school and your mom was in her bed and you bring her food to, uh, you got older and you have a driver's license and you're taking her to doctor appointments and, and so forth. That might be something that's learned because your mother needed help. You became a caregiver because of necessity or you feel guilty or you just didn't know better. And I've seen many clients where they meet me and, and you know, they're even in the, they're a nurse or uh, they're just like the caregiver around the house. And when we start doing coaching, we recognize, wait a minute, that's not what I want to do. That's not natural. It's just what I've come to know. I need to do, or I'm a people pleaser and I don't know what it'd be like to say no. Or when I was a child, I had the idea if my mother were to die, it part of that responsibility would be on me. And so we learn behaviors and are unaware of it. And then there are things that are natural. So it's very important for every person to just do like an evaluation with a coach. Maybe there's a my upcoming book that's coming up, but there's ways to strip that down and recognize what is what is it that I like to do? Now, I already brought this up already if that if you don't like yourself, then this might be really hard because that's in a way because what you're connecting to is that I'll suck at that or your nervous system's so stressed that yeah. you can't think beyond survival. Yeah, and there's definitely a part of me that like uh wants to cuz I I've confronted that part in myself and I know that you can beat that like it's not even a thing mm -hmm. beat it it's just like you realize it's just a irrational fear if you're if mm -hmm. you'll just soften your resistance to it and maybe you know if you have an idea for something that you know maybe you want to start making music you know something i want to do and here i am like i had here's all the stuff just be here's totally real come up with you dude you're 40 years old you know at the time is like four or five years ago you're 40 you're 40 years old you uh who wants to listen to music from you um too late to start do you really have time to learn all the software you know like you have all these like this chatter and these feelings that come up in the form of like resistance and it's very easy to almost let that voice speak as though it knows what the hell it's talking about mm -hmm. as though it as though your potential is is somehow understood on some cosmic level and you, you think this voice telling you no is, is and you and when you really analyze it you realize that all those voices are are coming from your your experiences and the meanings you give into them and the voices that you've heard other people that you've let in and it's not actually coming from any place that's uh actually like fundamentally true it's totally just a story but yet it feel you know if you're not aware of that it really feels it fe it's the same feeling of like trying to like do something and being have you know if you had like so-called like if you had people around you that were like maybe cutting you down or discouraging you from taking an action because of jealousy what other kind of, we can let that stuff in and and, and 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 turn it in on ourselves i notice um mm -hmm. it create a lot of unnecessary story around it so just like learning like what do you maybe this would be a good pivot here or just to drill a little bit deeper i want to say something to what you said though hold on yeah a second. yeah yeah because I had this experience with you and um, yep. where <laughs> you, you met, you brought up a bunch of technical stuff and you have seen a pattern in me when it comes to that. And I've gotten better and more open-minded to learn things, but I have traveled to your place and you've shown me like how simple it is to use a gear because it's very familiar to you. You j And I remember you had some resistance to, feeling like a jack of all trades. And your story was, well, when I was be becoming an entrepreneur, I had no one else to do this. And I, 
I just had to learn it. I just, I just, just had to fucking do it. And so there's parts you had resistance when you started developing your own product like this, like, you know, this stuff really well. And I, I, I just recently had a conversation where you said, there's parts of me likes to actually create this. It's okay. Whereas I took the information you told me and I just threw it out and I paid an engineer to record yeah. my music. And that's, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm getting better at technology. I'm not one of those people who repelled. It's just like, I only can handle so much. Part of it, it is that I'm, maybe I'm not interested in, I don't know. I've, now I, re I recognize if I owned a recording studio and I had a lot of equipment, I never even learned how to use it. I had an engineer. And so even when I met you, I was like, Hey, show me how to do this. I'm ready. And I never did it. And I think I, it was a couple of times that I never did it. And even when I moved up to Oregon, I paid someone to do it. So I recognize that I like to direct that mm -hmm. it's, I have a very creative mind. I only can be creative, at least the experiences, if I'm not so in my head. So I'm more in close. I, I mean, I enjoy the spaces where I can, my hands are free. I don't have to worry about anything. And I could just be an experience and let someone else, else push the buttons. So that's an example where I feel really good with that. And I also didn't allow not having this learning curve that I thought I ha maybe would have to go through to get in a way. Now, I'm bringing this up also because I think it's kind of funny because you brought that up, but also mm -hmm. that there are some people who think they have to learn something in order to experience something. And some people might say, well, that's great. You can afford a producer, but there might be a producer who can't do something as well as you do. So yes. there's always the, you know, people can barter. Some people get really excited. Yeah. For example, you might be a musician. Uh, I'm sorry. You might be some who is an artist and wants to create music, but you don't know how to push the buttons, but you're really good at account accounting or something else. And you have a pretty good producer who just sucks at managing his money and organization. You might be mm -hmm. like a match made in heaven. So many of us like, have the ability to help each other out. We're just not aware of it. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I've certainly caught that in myself where, and you and I have discussed this, like every superpower, every aptitude casts a shadow, mm -hmm. right? So yes. we, we're going to focus on like, we can want things and sometimes we won't just let ourselves admit, this is what I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I know I can be good at and willing to learn. And this just mm -hmm. doesn't interest me. And we'll like, feel like that thing that doesn't interest you or that you don't want to do. Like, for example, you don't want to learn the technical side of things. So yet in order to, you might, it's great. This is a great illustration. Here's a, I want to use you as a example here, Ray. Mm -hmm. You're writing a book. Okay. You know, I can sit down and write. I know I can write. I can use a word pad. I can use a basic computer. You know, that kind of stuff. Um, but there's certain things about that book, doing the book that I'm just not gonna, I'm just not gonna do. Like, I just, mm -hmm. I can't, it just feels like I'm climbing uphill. So for example, um, the graphic design of the cover, uh, maybe uh, you've had me help you with some of the kind of the mark the you know, even workshopping the title and the marketing and some of this kind of stuff mm -hmm. that you, you valued kind of an outside perspective on that. Um, mm -hmm. Publishing it, uh, there's a lot of elements of it now. If you were putting all this pressure on yourself, if, if you, if when you first had this idea for a book, which is in its pure essence is like, I want to share my gift. I have a lot of experience and valuable. I have a passion. I care about, I know the power of <clears throat> helping someone shift their mindset and see themselves and, and, and have self love. I know what that can do for my, it's done for me in my life, my clients. And I would love for the world to have more of that gift. Is something I want to share. That's the pure like beauty in mm -hmm. it, in my opinion, right? You just, yeah. it's just a knowing, right? It's coming from a place mm -hmm. of self-love and generosity from within yourself. And then there's the real world of all the, 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 like the obstacles, you know, the little challenges that you're going to have to like navigate on the way to getting that from a pure aspect of the imagination into the material world as a real thing, you know, published mm -hmm. and out there and hopefully successful and, you know, spreading like wildfire, right? Mm -hmm. If whenever that idea come up and you didn't love yourself enough to believe that even though you have no, I haven't done this before, I don't have a clue, 
on like on certain aspects of it. If you let your thoughts come up and say, well, you don't know how to this and you've never done that. And, and how, and you, and, and you start to feel like you're responsible for all the technical aspects of it and all that, you would just like be piling lead on top of your, your dream. You know, you'd just be weighing yourself mm-hmm. down with all this resistance. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that that is a, like, that is a component of like the survival mechanism in humans, when we feel like we're stressed mm-hmm. or overwhelmed, we shut down. We can yes. we can uh, become very avoidant of ourselves and what we really would really, you know, help us to thrive because we become unwilling to maybe find some information or get some help or you know calm the nervous system down enough to maybe ra- kind of give it a moment and rationally you know come to uh, like go learn you know go learn about the thing a little bit you know. Um, Mm -hmm. so I see that, like, I've seen that journey for you too, you know, and, uh, Mm -hmm. being willing to put yourself out there in a way that was, is this is, I know this has been challenging for you to put the book out there. Yeah. 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 And, um, you noticed, so yeah, it's (laughs) the idea. (laughs) Yeah. the, The idea is that what you're bringing up here is that, my, when I, I, I want, I remember the first manuscript I had written, I, I felt as though that I could have learned more, that maybe it wasn't good enough, uh, that I wasn't smart enough or, and what's interesting is I had a pretty good following and I was seeing clients and yet I had this belief about myself. So I had this idea that I wanted to make this book evergreen. I wanted it, it to like be who I am as accurately as I can be and share this. And it'd be timeless. Like um, I put this in my book. Also, I spoke about it in like space oddity by David Bowie, where like he wrote this song in 1969. If you hear it now, it actually sounds kind of current, you know, it's still an amazing song, you know? So I had this idea, like I need to write my Bohemian Rhapsody and so forth. And yet all their, all these artists do is just write better and better, better songs because they're in their element. They're excited and that's it. That's just how it goes. And you needed to, to release it and give it to, to the world and because people are waiting on this. And this is something people don't really think about is that all of us are channeling information from the collective consciousness. We're all conduits to uh, what's going on. So, when we're thinking of an idea, whether it's writing a song or starting a business that can help people like with their, their time to make or make things more convenient for them, that you're probably not the only person on this planet that is experiencing some idea to up level, just like technology to make things better. And the only thing is that someone else, if you don't act on it, is going to do it before you. <laughs> so... Yeah, And it's not like a race because maybe your version of it will be a little bit different, but you are getting that information by the problems on our planet to the solutions you want to create, whether you're consciousness, conscious of it or not. And so I can look at my book from 10, 15 years ago or, uh, and my writing as well. And it's true that I'm a different person. I don't know who the heck wrote that. Yeah, but when I when I look at it, I'm like eighty percent of it's still pretty solid. There's not a lot that would have changed, so that's the only thing. And parts of me wishes I would have done that, but I also know because I am my purpose. My purpose was to see that insecurity come up and heal it. That's my shadow. So those doubts are your shadows. There's hidden beliefs behind that that you need to see. So some people might listen to this or watch this and go shit and they'll start hearing um i'm not enough um i don't have have enough money Mm -hmm. some of those those ideas you have might be truths but it might also be you arguing for your limitations and you're unaware of it Mm -hmm. and that self-doubt is keeping you from doing that rather than whether or not that thing you're going to do would be successful or not and that would be your purpose whether you embark on that or not you might end up doing the healing and recognize I can do what I want. And you never even touch wherever that project is. Mm -hmm. And that was part of it. That's what's interesting about consciousness and and how everything 
could you, we can experience value in all things we're trying to do, all things we're tempted to do, all things we're interested in in just that moment, and it might change the next days. Yeah. Well, what I've learned is, you know, for me personally, I, I've seen that life is, uh, you know, our experience and consciousness and the human body, we're going to get metaphysical here, is a, is, a, is a dance between logic and emotion. It's a dance between um, what's referred to as the masculine and feminine energy. It's a dance between it, uh, progress and pleasure. And so I think progress and pleasure is something that can be kind of understood in modern times very easily. It doesn't sound too woo. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's a natural, you know, instinct to want to experience progress. You know, it's fun to finish a puzzle. It's, it's fun to play a game. It's fun to beat a video game. It's fun to uh, go on a date, you know? Um, these things have a sense of like moving through time and a sense of enjoyment. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can draw a lot of meaning out of, out of that. <clears throat> but progress on its own is empty um, if, if it becomes devoid of self-love or what I refer to, I don't mean hedonistic pleasure necessarily, I mean joy. Um, and we can, we can like, you know, you, you can think, okay, I need to start this business to do something. You can get so far into that thinking that that is your purpose that mm -hmm. before you know it, you've kind of choked out beauty in your life. You're stressed out, feeling burned yes. out. Okay. And, and that's a lesson in life. You know, you realize, oh, my shadow drove me to feel my not enoughness made me f project onto this expectation of this business, putting all this meaning, or maybe you actually do hit the achievement. This is a big one. Um, and you know, this is common with entrepreneurs sell seven, eight figure businesses. And, and three months later, they, they fall into this wave of depression because they've given so much of their purpose was yeah. externalized onto this, this external achievement. Now it's done. Well, am I done? Am I finished? Right there. What, who am I without this goal? You know, that's, that's the, I was never that person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 I, you know, I've, yeah. I have w w worn many hats and those hats have become successful according to consensus reality, meaning like what the collective would believe. So as an example, I was on a radio, I, 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 I wrote music and um, I was on like 27 different stations. And during that whole time, I was unhappy. I was just... Mm -hmm. Trying to, I was competing with Lincoln Park and bands out there who were doing the whole payola thing, were paying off uh, DJs and stuff. And during that time, I was already a coach, and I noticed that I didn't care to promote myself. It wasn't about that. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I, I, I'm, I have a great relationship with my dad now. I mean, he's dead now, but I, I mend, mend that relationship. And I was becoming a coach and it was like, I was in this place where, but I was supposed to be a rock star and I really enjoyed coaching. And I went back to school to get my master's and doctorate, but that was like letting go of that identity. But I also felt strange to do that thinking I would like walk away from it. But when I got my doctorate, after I graduate, graduated, I started my eighties parody band, the Pac-Man. That became successful when I realized, oh, I actually like performing music over this trying to be a rock star. It's the performance. Mm -hmm. I didn't know mm -hmm. that. It's kind of like what we're talking about. And I went, mm -hmm. wow, that's what I missed. And so yeah. I just wanted people to rock out with me, singing with me, you know, leave them on the prayer, take my hand, we'll make it our sweat. You know, but so, you know, I wanted, I love that interaction. I also love the interaction. That was the other thing. I was doing workshops as Dr. Ray and as Stingray. I was getting a crowd into it and, and they're singing with me. I went, oh, I like engaging with people. I that I it got it wasn't about um, how much money I made at the workshop or how much I made in the Pac-Man. I like to help. I like people lightening up. I, I like to see their smile. I love that energy. And that's a big part of me. And so whether I would make money off of that, whether that would be a career or not, or if, whether I'd be, become a comedian, I don't know. But I, I recognize that 
that that shifted many different directions in my life. And, and I'm on another new path. And what I mean by that is I came to Oregon. I thought, oh, I'll just start another 80s band because I had left California. And then after coming here, I went, ah, oh, that's not it. I don't really want to do that. So I went in the studio and recorded two originals, which are really good, really good. But I, I, they're on Spotify, but I haven't promoted it, and I don't care. For the first yeah. time, that's an example we, you brought up. I'm okay with just 1,000 or 2,000 listens to it. I don't care. I can mm -hmm. share it with my friends. And that's mm -hmm. what we're talking about, Where whether it's a job or not, that when you can find personal joy in what you do, it just brings so much more aliveness in your life. So now that has led to why don't I incorporate maybe some of this music with Dr. Ray with upcoming things that we're doing, like whether it's guided meditation music or I don't know. I'm That's kind of up in the air right now. Yeah. But it's like well, it's going different directions. What's feeling right now? Who am I becoming now? And I am I being true to my authentic self now? Mm hmm. Well, I love that this conversation has uh, gone towards music. So we both, you know, love music in our own ways. Um, you know, this show is called The Music of Life. Mm -hmm. And uh, the philosophy is, you know, my goal is to explore the art of creating a life worth dancing to. And and this is really what I was talking about, that tango between um, having a sense of progress in your life, mm -hmm. moving forward through time, uh, and in having and experiencing the beauty of the moment all along the way. Mm -hmm. And if you think about that, that is what music is, you know, and again, to get kind of really break this down, get a little bit metaphysical with it and even tie it into, um, we'll talk about Rick Rubin and the creative act. You know, we both. I was just that. thinking that just now. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, I know. Now. I can feel it. <laughs> Came through my crown chakra. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, my crystal beamed it to me. Over here, the crystal. I got amethyst back here. Beamed it in the back of my my head. Um, so music. I think I love music as an analogy because everyone can understand music. I don't think anyone has not experienced music. It's probably like one percent of people that don't enjoy music, but you know, it's just proof that there are aliens. Um, so music is. If you think about what music is, you have noise, which is just. Um, randomness uh, a lot of vibrations happening over each other all at the same time mm -hmm. now that's like the emotions it, it can be it's potential but it's also chaotic you, it's not um mm -hmm. it's not rational now mm -hmm. we take geometry and we insert it into that cloud of vibration and certain and that and it magnetically attracts to it around it energy okay so now mm -hmm. you're starting to see form and but you get curves at the same time so in music on the piano the musical notes are actually the intervals between like a, a c a c sharp and a, or if you form an accord like say an f an f major chord the three notes in there um those form geometric shapes uh, i can't remember at the moment which one it is so in other words when you're listening to music you're hearing what geometry sounds like yes Okay, so which is fascinating concept when you see the relationship between geometry and um, and reality. Now, if you think about, in order to enjoy music, you have to have a masculine or progressive component to it, and so we're going to put down a rhythm that is going to be locked in time, and it is going to um, move or drive forward or create the heartbeat of of the music, and then you have the notes which are um intervals of vibration that form around ge geometry so there's an organization there's a masculine component to that but if you make music if your only goal in music is to technically make perfect music it will be boring and bland robotic sure. right so now you have the feminine quality which is the tension and the you 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 allow things to be just a little offbeat, the, just the little imperfections that come into it that create a sense of like, um, uh, we call it like rhythm, you call it syncopation, a swing, it creates a sense of swing in the music, the tension, the release. And so what you're having is you're having, an, when you listen to music, it's evoking emotions and holding that, ev the, ev the, this fluctuation of like beauty and emotions through time right forward through mm -hmm. time and there's like a million life lessons 
to be understood in that, uh, in, in at the heart of how how our lives are like a song. Our lives are like music. We're going to have moments where there's tension and moments where there's release, moments where we're on t- a little bit out of time and we snap back in. And that fluctuation is what makes life an art. It's what makes life poetic. It's what makes life um, an act of creation all the time. And I know you have something to say. I can see it. <laughs> and that's why you yeah. called your channel Music of Life, right? So this is yes. your, yeah. this, this would be great to cut out and put on your channel. You know, is it yeah. the promo video? <laughs> it's yeah. really good. It's I really do. good. Uh, yeah. For clarity, just for almost like I'm the host here because I, I, I understood everything you're saying, but I want clarity as well because you use the language of masculine and feminine. And most mm-hmm. people don't even really know what that means. Like they assign it to a gender or sure, yeah. whatever. Yeah. It's, so when you talked about the masking component, it is where here's this, the structure of it. So it actually could come to life and then yep. versus the soul or what you feel in channel is more the feminine part of it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it would be no differently if I'm sitting here and I'm feeling something in the feminine, but it, unless I go try it and move to the masculine, nothing's created at all. Yeah. So it's where both has to ha- come together. Mm-hmm. Okay. I just wanted clarity on that. Yeah. So what if in life I feel really good about an idea and I I have a lot of like, I love to feel good and and I really love pleasure and and, 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 and feel really good, but I have a resistance to maybe kind of like disciplining myself to creating a schedule Mm -hmm. or moving the dial and things or moving it forward. What kind of music am I going to be making in my life? It's going to be start to sound noisy. And the further you get into that, you might get into you know, this like someone imagine like what addiction looks like is music and be chaotic and just, there's mm-hmm. no forward movement. It's just static. And if I'm too overly driven and trying to control my music too much, not letting it flow, there's not going to be no life to it. It's not going to be enjoyable. Yeah. People can't relate to it. You know, that's like, yeah. A good example is yeah. the, 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 I don't, it's not true AI, but the AI that creates music, it sounds soulless. I soulless. I yeah. don't think it's really that good, but keep in mind, That's not really AI because it's been set up by human beings to have certain parameters to bring in history, logical mind to understand Mm -hmm. the notes and how things might work to even get an idea of what, like, say, uh, EDM might sound like or uh, world sound or something, tribal sound. Like, Mm -hmm. it's going to be very generic. It's going to be based on what it knows, and that's it. And that's why it probably sounds soulless because it's not really – creating something new. It's just basically recycling what's out there already. Now, true AI would be where also it's, it's, it's picking up on a collective, like us human beings. Yeah. It has a mind of its own as no parameters. It's truly thinking for itself. Then the many people think like, then they'll become this robot and kill humans and blah, 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 that whole bullshit. Yeah. So. Well, if AI is turned, if AI is taught to realize that it can never understand emotions the way a human does, it'll always see the value in learning from a human. So yeah. why would it, why would it destroy you? You know, so we better program yeah. it that way. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, Rick Rubin, the creative act, uh, mm-hmm. we both delved into that book. He talks a lot about the, the power of the creative act is really the essence of life. Um, any thoughts that, that, uh, you want to share on that? Absolutely. I wish I had listened to Rick Rubin, not the, you know, stuff he produced, which is freaking amazing as well uh but more i wish i had that book 20 30 years ago right and i but that was probably through his own process and seeing artists getting go into their heads to even have artists say uh, that that people don't know who are like famous already and them saying i don't ever want to do this again i just can't do this and then rick would ask questions like then what would you do why did you start doing this and it's i love to create well that's it and then they create another app, another album. It was more, they didn't like the, the music business, their manager or the, the tours they had to go on. Like, but in that he's, he shares the same sentiments. And, and that is where we all are artists and we all have something unique we can create. It's our version of creation itself, God, source energy in, in whatever. But when we go into the human experience of negativity and we compare it to what's out there or go into our heads, like you mentioned, Eric, where 
I can't do that. I can't afford a producer or learn how to use the software. Then we get stuck. And mm -hmm. so it's recognizing all of those things you are thinking are there anyway. And it's through this creative act, you're eliciting the shadows. No differently if you were talking to a therapist or coach and them also discovering your blind spots in that conversation. And what a beautiful way to find yourself by maybe literally trying to do something artistic, getting mad at yourself and kind of going, why would I get mad at myself? Who's mad at me? And how would I like to feel about myself and grow from that? Yeah. And, and accept that it's supposed to be challenging. Mm -hmm. Like it's all about whether you're, it's all about willingness. You know, Andrew Huberman, um, I really like listening to his stuff for the, you know, very quantifiable science stuff. And he's a good dude. You can tell he has a good heart. Um, and I loved how he was talking about like, you know, a popular thing, you know, we both do this is cold plunging. And mm -hmm. he was talking about like, if there's a willingness and you're sold on it, if you're sold mm -hmm. on it, you, you will endure the so-called challenge or pain, but the ex benefit you experience in the back end of it, the payoff is so much better than that, that like you, you, you can actually turn, end up desiring making that a habit in your life. Whereas if you were mm -hmm. say against your will, if you were resistant and not wanting it and you were you know, pushed into it, you, that could be a, a traumatic experience for you. you all that shock mm -hmm. to the body could have been perceived as like, this is what it feels like when my will is violated, you know, yep. or I'm forced like it's So there's a perfect example of the meaning that's being portrayed on it. So you have to accept that, like, just like taking a cold shower or getting in the cold water, there's going to be moments of discomfort whenever you are in the act of creation where doubt mm -hmm. and stuff are going to arise. And the question is, are you seeing that as an opportunity to learn more about yourself? Or is that a reason? Is, are you using that as validation, um, false validation that you're not enough or capable of this thing? Mm -hmm. yeah, I love that you brought up the cold plunge yeah. because uh, the first time when I got my cold plunge, uh, I put it on video, I think, and I was just talking through it. And I was just make I was I was laughing about it because I didn't do any particularly breath work. I didn't do like the Wim Hof breath work. I just basically the the opening of it was that I was raised by Marine and he and he basically just taught me to do it. And that do it is more like you're gonna have to do it anyway, like just move mm -hmm. through it. There's just there's no other choice but just doing it. And it's also that I always emphasize more on the benefits. And so my body is healing inflammation. From it. I'm seeing improvements in my life. So the more I focus on the uh, improvements and the benefits, the less cold it is. I don't know. It's like really strange how it's not that uncomfortable yeah. for me. But yeah. So many people kind of go into, oh, the cold, it's cold. You know, like, mm -hmm. oh my God, it's cold. I'm like, you just make yourself cold before you mm -hmm. go in there. Just, just mm -hmm. do it. It's not a really big deal. No, differently than, differently than like going, I don't know if I can learn the guitar. You know, my finger, it hurts my fingers and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Well, Every person who began guitar, you, you, you know, they, you have to develop calluses. So it doesn't hurt. It's not a really big deal. But didn't it feel good just even strum the strings and just hold mm -hmm. this, this instrument? You know, mm -hmm. what, why are you doubting yourself for the first time to why do you think you're supposed to figure, have it figured out for the first time? Where is that coming from? Who and what are you comparing yourself to? That's the shadow right there. Like, oh, mm -hmm. I think I'm supposed to be somewhere else versus right here learning this instrument right now. Yeah. What's coming to my mind is that progress is found in the challenge. Like that's what progress mm -hmm. feels like. The dream is the emotional part of it. I mean, it's mm -hmm. all emotional. It's a relationship all the time. It's dynamic, but it's as simple as this. If like, go take a damn aptitude test, take a Myers-Briggs test. Um, you have a personality or like a personality friction point quiz. I know that's uh, just gone live. So we'll post a link to that. People can go take a free. It'll show mm -hmm. you where like you might, where you might have unconscious resistance to things, you know, and how mm -hmm. you relate, especially with how you relate to others. So that can be, these are things that help you see yourself better in the mirror. So this is like to know thyself, you know, mm -hmm. but there's simple things like the, the Carl, the Jungian based, you know, psychology, the Myers-Briggs thing. You can go to 16 personalities.com. That's a great start for anyone. It's free. You can self-reflect. Mm -hmm. It will give you a lot of aspects of like, here's maybe some of your aptitudes and things. That's a good place to start with this kind of stuff. You're going to notice the more you discover yourself that what's naturally going to arrive or rise out of that, you're going to have ideas. Um, mm -hmm. 
we are life force and, and we, uh, you know, our innate part, we are, we are create, we are creators. What do you mm-hmm. think that or not? You are always creating, whether it's even meaning or everything you are creating all the time. Mm-hmm. You can't help yes. it. And right. Can I show what that means? It's yeah. even this, it could be me, um, walking out and at this moment and, and someone drives real quickly by me and I go, what an asshole. I mean, he didn't see me. You've never done that, created that thought. Or <laughs> maybe he really didn't see me and has nothing to do with me at all. And just not a big deal. I didn't get hit. Why am I making a big deal about it? I, I mean, that is a creative act. Yeah. That's a creative act. Yeah. So it's even the way we just think about simple things, even yeah. like, wow, I, I should have gone to the bathroom a little bit sooner. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. I would have this accident. <laughs> you yeah. can feel bothered by yourself for like not going to the bathroom sooner, yeah. or you can kind of go, you know what? <laughs> Sometimes shit happens. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Once we like, if you'll take the time to like discover the self a little bit more and, and you know, it's this thing, a lot of people are so busy trying to catch up and do stuff like, mm-hmm. you know, just an hour or like, you know, set aside to do this or read some books that help you self reflect or have, you know, for me, I, I have to have my morning, you know, ritual. Like I stay, I, I want to go inward and just like get to know myself better. What am I experiencing? Just objectively observe what I'm experiencing as though I were listening to a friend sharing what they're going through just that alone Mm -hmm. helps you to awaken to like what are you really desiring to create or you know in every idea is just a just an idea you know they're they're malleable Mm -hmm. right your ideas but if you feel a sense of expansion or there's a little bit of excitement there the question is is like is that worthy of exploring or looking into more and Mm -hmm. what if i were to experiment and and go what if I had 1% of effort put into to action to go investigate this curiosity, this little idea here? What if I was to learn just one little more thing about it? What doors might open just if I just expanded my awareness into like, maybe I do a little Google search or ask some friends or just do a little find out, like, could this be possible? You know, mm-hmm. look into it, this kind of things. And Absolutely. that like, that is such a simple thing. And if you just think, if you live in like day sized containers one day at a time and you can move the 1% in a year, you've, you've, you have a 365% increase in you living from a place of excitement and joy, right? It's a pretty good return on your investment for, yes. you know, a few minutes a day of, of, of self reflection. And the, and just to add a little extra encouragement here. The formula, what we're talking about here is also the formula for self-esteem. People talk about self-worth and self-esteem, but the way you build self-esteem is you take a risk in the direction of who you are. Something feel like, get out, you know, I'm nervous to get up. I'm seeing some karaoke, so I do it anyway. You know, mm-hmm. you always feel, hey, I want to do that again. Or, you know, you get on the roller coaster that scares you and you survive it. And you're like, I think I'll do that mm-hmm. again. You know, that's what gets you to trust yourself more if you're not showing up for yourself and you're not actualizing your dreams into the physical world and making a sense of progress you're going to feel like you don't trust yourself you're going to feel not enough you're going to feel not capable because you're just not getting in the cold plunge and enduring that little bit of discomfort to see what happens to see that you can that you are actually bigger than that you've got to step into the tension of it a little bit yeah, a little digression, but um, maybe not. I imagine that <clears throat> for the younger generation, which uh, people say that they might get offended easier to uh, they have if something doesn't feel good, they're asking other people to adjust themselves so they feel comfortable about themselves, that they might have an aversion to when they feel uncomfortable. and. I think I feel I feel blessed to be raised in my generation where it it was kind of like you feel that you feel like shit get back up so what yeah. that's life it was that was kind of the attitude so it was easier for me to lean into it because that was the collective narrative and, and so if a person is watching this and and 
they just think there's no way they can get there because they get overwhelmed. But I just watched this video. Then it might not be first embarking on trying to find your purpose or doing what you love. It might be just sitting with your emotions. How mm -hmm. can I make peace with this? Because you're going to have to make peace with this even if you start doing something. Because when you start doing something that has its ups, ups and downs, you're going to be triggered. Things are going to happen. And it's going to be an emotional experience. So just work with your emotions. Like, how can I be okay with the outcome? How can I be okay with taking pause and just feeling that discomfort? How can I notice my monkey mind when it compares to other people? How can I just look how beautiful I am? And this is not a narcissistic act. This is mm -hmm. about truly loving yourself, you know, as a child of God. This is just loving yourself in this, this space of just knowing that you are completely worthy. And whether you do that thing or not, you're still worthy. You're here to exist and discover more of who you are. But I know this. People who are doing what they love seem to be happier. People who are in in service seem to be happier and people who get out of survival and are able to contribute even a song where only 10 people mm -hmm. hear it are happier. So yes. create yeah. life for yourself and from your heart. Yeah. And you know, a, a unique challenge that generations now and on, on, on us, cause we're here, it, it is a unique challenge. It's not insurmountable, but it is a unique challenge. It's never been, experience that we know of in human history is mm -hmm. the ready and in your face all the algorithmically enforced um diversity of opinions about how life should be lived and mm -hmm. who's right and who's wrong and you see this like hyper like division or perception of that being kind of enforced through technology and algorithm. And it's not like it's, you need to believe there's some conspiracy theory or whatever. Like at the end of the day, it wouldn't matter if there was, or there wasn't at the end of the day, it's here. And, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a more important time than ever to know yourself. It's yes. more important than it has. It is really, really important to get in and know yourself. Um, I'll share one more anecdotal story from I, my end, because if I could go back, say even five years ago, especially 10 years ago and have a conversation with myself, some things that I would want to tell myself, you know, I'm four, I'm 43 now, I'll be 44 next month um, or next month from the time we're shooting this. And, you know, when you, you uh, like this past couple of years, I had, you know, external quote failures. Mm -hmm in a sense of like a lot of change happened, mm -hmm. you know, the world had shut down, um, business ventures I was involved in the rug got pulled out from under them, business partnerships, there was separation created, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of, a lot of these things, like just so much change in so little time. I, my ego was to, you know, my, it was like, oh, I can handle this, you know, I'm fine. I'm good or whatever. And I, my shadow was, I actually was avoiding confronting some of the pain in the morning I was actually feeling. You know, because change actually mm -hmm. is unsettling and those emotions, you know, need to be confronted and felt and not avoided. And so for the past, you know, year, I really cracked down on like, I need to have a spiritual practice every day and, and get in, you know, with myself. And now I feel grateful that I've had so a lot of those changes because it has given me the space to be in creating from a place that's a, that's a little bit better match for where I'm at in my life and my capabilities. And I can see, you know, like if I could go back 10 years, I can see decisions that were made. I would have, I would have encouraged myself. No, continue that, that feeling you have is the thing that you're, that you're seeking. Don't compare yourself to others. Mm -hmm. Don't compare yourself to what other entrepreneurs or their products don't feel less than because they have progressed very, you know, they've done very, well and have grown in a certain area. Don't assume that you have less value than them anyway. And also don't compare yourself in any way. In fact, be grateful and happy for their success because your capacity to do that, they, they, they've, they have their shadows. They have things that they've done well with. And everything I've learned in the past couple of years, realize that like, it's been all my failures have been designed to teach me that I have value 
when I've listened mm. to the emotions. They were teaching me that I had value, but I was the one not seeing it. I was the one not accepting it. And now mm -hmm. I feel empowered because I can do something about that, right? I, I can put my hands on that steering wheel and begin steering the car when I know that it's all me. It's all me. It's nobody else. I'm no, I'm no victim. It's all me right here. And that requires responsibility, requires insight, uh, and it may be useful to get a coach to help you with that if that's, if that's difficult. I know it's what you do, Dr. Ray. Mm -hmm. um, but man, is it worth it because this, like, it's your fucking life. Mm -hmm. It's your motherfucking life. Mm -hmm. Like, it's yeah. your life. So you're a creator, you're creating your life. And if you'll own that, the degree to which you own it is the degree which you experience power in your life. Say that again. That was the actually degree, the degree to which you own it, that you're the creator is the degree to which you have power in your life. Yeah. It's all if on you, you don't do that, you have to take responsibility for say the failures or not being happy. Yeah. And that's the opposite of it. If you don't, yeah. and don't be afraid of your negative emotions. Mm -hmm. You know, as a kid, you're up to the edge of a pool and you don't know how to swim and you, you know, you get pushed in or you jumped in, you might feel a lot of fear, but by confronting that emotion and hopefully having a parent or someone help you also with the logic of like, well, here's how you move your arms and here, trust mm -hmm. you learn to, you learn, Oh, I can develop the skill. And then the fear goes away. Mm -hmm. It's just like that. Yeah. You know, you want to know how to tie your shoes so you don't trip. So get over your mm -hmm. emotions, embrace them. And they're just telling you, it doesn't feel good to not know how to tie my shoes. So doesn't that mean that knowing how to tie my shoes might make me feel better. So mm -hmm. it could be a very rational decision once you're aware of it, you know? And if you put yourself out there in social media like this, be aware that sure, some of your friends might say you're showing off. Why would you be doing that to you'll get strange messages like Eric did on his original video about this. And all you're yeah. doing is listening their shadows and their blocks that they're projecting onto you, which is also your contribution for them to have an opportunity to work on themselves. And that's how this all works. We're all here to shift this earth. We are here to create a new earth. Yeah, that's that's the opportunity, at least, <laughs> for mm -hmm. sure. We're all creating yeah. it all the time. The new earth is mm -hmm. today is a new earth. It's, yeah. than it was yesterday and tomorrow yeah. will be a new earth. What role or, do you want to play in that? Yeah. yeah, a better earth. Yeah. 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 Um, well, Dr. Ray, if uh, someone was um, interested in learning with you, I know we'll put your website right here. Um, maybe just really quickly, because you have the quiz, which is really cool, because I went through that. Mm hmm. What, um, because I think this would this might be one of those things that's free, first of all. Someone watching this could go do it, and it would be like one of those like really cool self reflection things that will help you kind of experience what we're talking about here. Like, uh, tell us a little bit about the quiz, why you made it, how it works. So, the personality friction point quiz is a part of my book as well, and it was a quiz we decided to do because it's fun and simple. and Many people, when they're in social situations or in a relationship, they don't know why people are attracted onto them or why they repel people. And so there are friction points that we all have, including myself. So when I'm stressed, I could be kind of more dominating in the conversation. Uh, so the quiz, when I took the test, that's what came up. So there's like 10 different personality types that come up. And it's a, just a... a I think a, a neat way, particularly if someone is just exploring self-development and want to, they want to gain greater insight themselves to take quickly to kind of see kind of what we're talking about more of, of as far as why am I this way? Now, I'll be up front. The test isn't coaching or therapy. It's just a test to reveal those shadows. What you do with it is, is on you, but it's a, a great opportunity to kind of recognize like, oh, I communicate this way because I want people like me and I'm afraid. Oh, I'm trying to make people 
laugh because I'm deflecting because I don't want them to ask me questions because I feel insecure. Oh, I give advice, but it's really because I don't know if they really will see me. So we all behave these ways in social situations. And this is where more of those shadows show up. So that's what the test is about. Yeah. And I think there's a, you know, as going through it, I noticed one of the things like at first you're going to feel, you might feel some defense mechanisms come up. Like, Mm -hmm. like I don't want to admit that about myself or be honest with it. Mm -hmm. Like it can be a little like, but you got to think like a comedian here. Like it's kind of funny, right? You know, it's good to take a lighthearted approach to this kind of stuff because like, that's why we like comedy because they're making fun of our shadow. You know, they're making fun of the parts of us that sometimes we don't want to admit, you know? And then when you laugh, because that's the tension releasing, you're like, yeah, that's Mm -hmm. me, you know? So just, just, you know, laugh at yourself. It's kind of funny, you know, like own it. People, people, people love you more for your flaws than they do for your superpowers to tell you the truth. Yeah. I welcome <laughs> yeah. people to roast us. To yeah. Roast us with the comment. You can say something about our, sh- my shirt or whatever, or I, I move around a lot during these interviews because I'm, I've got a little fiery energy. I, I'm not one who can sit in an office or in a chair. I'm standing. I can't sit down. That's just me. So it's good you know, we have your magic crystal behind you to calm you down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that it, it I'm everything is coming through me is coming through the crystal. So Yeah. Well, I can tell. Well, Dr. Ray, I appreciate you uh coming on again. Um I know we've we've kind of made an arrangements where we'll, I'll probably be having you on around once a month. Um I know you have your mm-hmm. book be coming up, so pretty soon we'll be able to have a uh um, I'm excited to kind of do a little deep dive into that because um, I got to read it and uh, and it, uh, you know as we discussed on the side that already helped me just self reflect more and have some more validation that like hey keep doing what you're doing and get some of these stupid beliefs that aren't serving you out of your mm-hmm. uh, out of your brain. Um, and for those uh, watching or listening, we'll put the link to that quiz. I'm right here. Or if you're listening down in the, uh, just look down in the description of wherever you're listening to this podcast, there'll be a link there. And of course, if you have any questions or roasts, feel free to uh, give us a thumbs up. Or, you know, if you want to hit that thumbs down, if there is such a thing anymore, do it. You know, we don't care. And uh, leave a comment if you have any subjects or things that um, you would like kind of a follow up on. Any of those like, yeah, but what about this kind of stuff? Go ahead and leave that in the comments as well. I'd love to hear it. And uh, maybe that's something we can discuss and help answer on the uh, some of the upcoming episodes. With that, Dr. Ray, uh, we're done, man. Let you get back to your day. And I appreciate you being on once again. Thank you. It's always a pleasure and fun. All right, we'll see you guys next time on The Music of Life. Hi, it's Dr. Ray here, and thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate your support, and you are the one who drives this channel. So if you like to be notified when new videos come out, please subscribe to my channel and push the bell button so you are notified when new videos come out. I appreciate you supporting this channel.